Hey guys, Reef Spy here. Welcome back. If you've been following along and you've watched part two of my uh, 180 gallon reef equipment tour, uh, you all have noticed that you know, part two uh, ended sort of abruptly. I apologize for that. Uh, the battery on my camera had died while I was filming. I didn't uh, think to check it before I started, so um, it cut off uh, part of the way through, but that's okay. We'll pick up where we left off. So we were discussing the UV sterilizer, I believe, um, when it cut off. So just let me recap. Uh, you know, this is my 180 gallon reef tank and I have a 40 gallon sump down below. Uh, in the previous episode, we have discussed the skimmer, the media reactor, uh, the different chambers. We were sort of talking about the uh, refugiums that I have in here and started to get into the UV sterilizer which is right here so this is the Emperor Aquatics 25 watt smart UV sterilizer uh, this is a piece of equipment that I had purchased for my 90 gallon aquarium when I was running that one and when I set this tank up um, you know, I've already owned it, so I decided to uh, put it onto here. So this is probably a little bit undersized uh, for this tank. This is rated for up to 130 gallons, according to the spec sheet. Uh, this is, you know, of course, a 180 gallon tank, so it is a little bit uh, smaller than recommended. Uh, however, um, you know, since it's here, I don't think it hurts anything. I mean, if anything, it just helps. So I have this plumbed into the return section um, of my sump here and you'll see that pump there uh, it's just a, a small pump that I have that's rated at 106 gallons per hour and that's pumping water up through this clear tube into the PVC which goes into this end of the sterilizer all the way down the tube back up and out into the tank do I think it's worth it to run a sterilizer um, like I said it certainly doesn't hurt uh, and if anything, it you know just helps. So with this particular one, I have the spec sheet open on the side of me here on the computer. Um, so if you wanted to use this just for clarifying algae and bacteria, um, you could run this at you know suggested 472 gallons per hour, and with a maximum of 788 gallons per hour. So you could just blast water through here, and it will clarify um, you know any algae bloom or bacterial bloom that you you know may be experiencing. Uh, now, if you wanted to use this for, um, it says waterborne protozoa, which would be, you know, why I want to run these things uh, is mainly to kill any uh, parasites, uh, you know, and harmful organisms that may be in my water column. Uh, they suggest to run this at 79 gallons per hour with a maximum of 131 gallons per hour, and that should um, you know, take quick care of any waterborne. Uh, parasites or organisms uh, that would pass through here. So with that pump there is rated at 106 gallons per hour. Uh, that you know puts me right in between those uh, values. So I have it uh, set. And you know if this thing is pumping 100 gallons per hour through here, um, you know in approximately two hours it should have sent the complete water volume of my system uh, you know, through the sterilizer at least once. Um, you know, obviously. I maybe don't have this set up in the optimum way that pump should probably be further away from the outlet here from the UV sterilizer. So you know, some of this water uh, coming out of here may be getting you know, re-sterilized, but you know, I'm okay with that. So maybe some of this is getting sent through twice, extra um, you know, sterilization done with it. Uh, but I think the majority of the water is, you know, passing right into uh, my return pump, which is that black uh, grate I have down there. <clears throat> so as far as my return, I have drilled uh, into this 40 gallon sump. A return line comes out there through the elbow. Uh, I have a shutoff valve here with some union releases. It goes into my return pump which is an Iwaki, uh, I don't know the bottle, it's uh, 20RLXT, 
and that is rated at 822 gallons per hour. And it goes up this black tube into another valve with some unions on it. Uh, the reason I have these unions and valves is if I ever need to service this pump, um, I could easily shut off you know, the water from here, isolate this pump from the system, uh, pull it out, service it, and get it replaced without having to do any major uh, plumbing rework with it. And the water just goes up into that T, and part of it goes to the right, and the other half goes to the left, up through the return jets. Um, so that covers the return pump. Uh, we talked about the refugium previously. Uh, what I didn't mention was the lighting. Uh, so you'll notice on here I have a, let's see, Marine Land. Um, this is a reef capable LED and it is programmable. So you could set a timer uh, internal to the light and have you know, blue lights come on and white lights. Um, this is really overkill for a refugium. The only reason that I'm using this is because I already had it. Uh, this was actually the light that I had used uh, on my original 10 gallon reef tank. And it's a pretty powerful light. It's a pretty good beginner light, I would say. It worked well for me. Um, the, you know, if I had to say any bad thing about it, it's not really adjustable. It's, you know, full on, you know, the whites are full on the blues, um, or, you know, both of them together. But it's plenty bright enough and it certainly works really well for growing macroalgae in there. Uh, all right, dosing pumps. So for this system, I do dose two part. So I dose uh, calcium and alkalinity, and I have two one gallon mixing jugs here. Uh, so I buy the dry chemicals from Bulk Reef Supply, uh, mix them myself, and you know, refill these jugs when they become empty. <coughs> They are connected to my two dosing pumps here, uh, which again, uh, these are the bulk reef supply, 1.1 uh, milliliter per minute dosing pumps. Um, really good pumps, uh, you know, so far been very reliable. And you know, so they're just pumping the solution very slowly out of the containers uh, into my sump area here. And you can see I have a little holder holding the lines. And that's also my auto top off line there. Uh, so these are controlled via some timers that I have there. So I could program, you know, when I want these to come on and off. So I basically have them spaced. Um, well, I'd have to look at my program, but I believe they come on eight times a day for 20 minutes each. And I have them staggered so they don't come on at the same time uh, each time. So. Uh, if you did the math, I think it was 88 milliliters per day that I am uh, putting into there. I'd have to double check, but I think that's what I have currently. And that seems to be keeping my parameters pretty stable. Um, constantly you know, trying to find a sweet spot uh, for you know, both the calcium and alkalinity. <coughs> uh, as far as flow in the main tank, uh, I have three um, wave makers up there or, you know, circulation pumps. Uh, my main ones that I have going, I have two of the JBO RW8 uh, wave makers up there. And I have to say, I'm very impressed by those pumps. Um, they push a lot of water. Uh, they have these controllers. These controllers can be, you know, linked together. Right now, I have these things set up. Uh, Pretty much on random flow and on the maximum. I've played around with several of the different settings. Um, you know, I can walk through the, these uh, controllers maybe at a later time. You know, all of the different functions. But if you you know do a search on RWHs, you know, I'm sure people have already done that. Uh, so these can be you know set to pulse mode, um, you know, sine wave, uh, random flow, just you know cycling left and right. Um, you can just put it on you know constant flow. So right now I have it on the else mode, uh, which is the random flow. And you know, they're just basically both doing their own thing individually. And you know, that seems to be working right now, but again, that's something else that I play around with from time to time to try different flow patterns and you know, see what works for me. And I think that is most of the equipment. I don't know that I've missed anything in there so i'll just kind of 
give some general uh, comments on the stand itself. <clears throat> so as I set this thing up, um, one important thing that I wanted to do was keep my wires you know, as far away from the water as possible. So all of my power strips I have mounted up very high. Uh, so there's no possibility that you know water's gonna drip down onto them. They're all above the water line. Uh, so you know, that helps me there. And I have some things mounted up above. Uh, so these big bricks here are my power supplies for my max spec razor lighting. I have three lighting fixtures. So I have the three power bricks up there. Uh, I do have some under cabinet lighting here, which is very nice. You can see what you're doing, so I can turn them on and off if I like. And oh, one additional thing that I will mention with the uh, Jabo Wave Makers. So they do also have a night mode. So when the lights go down, um, they will switch to low power. So it'll just go to the lowest power setting and just remain constant there. And when the lights come on, um, they'll revert back to whatever you had set them to previously. So being down here under the cabinet, I wasn't really able to take advantage of that. Uh, so what you'll notice is, you know, this little silver thing coming down here. That's just one of those little USB lights, you know, for a computer. And I have that plugged into an old, like, cell phone charger or something. And that's on a timer. So um, when I want my pumps on, that little light comes on and activates my little j -Bo, uh, controllers there. And I'll turn the pumps on. And when I want it to go you know, back to night mode, uh, the timer shuts that little LED off and, you know, they go back to night mode, so works out pretty well. So when I did set up this tank, I made sure that I had um, you know, taken the old outlet out of there and you know, reinstalled a GFCI outlet into there because uh, you've got, you know, lots of electronic devices and lots of water here and the two don't necessarily mix, so uh, it's best, you know, for your own safety and for the safety of all of the livestock in your tank um, you to make sure you have the proper electrical uh, system in place. Okay, so up on top of my tank, uh, you'll notice I have some screen tops that I have on here. Um, I was going to go with, you know, open top, but after losing a few fish to jumpers on my other tank, uh, you know, screen top I think is a must. Uh, so that's the screen tops, and then for lighting, I'm using three max spec razor lighting fixtures. Um, these are the, I believe, 120 watt versions. Uh, really good lighting, I'll say. Um, I've been having a very good success with it. Seems to be growing everything uh, that I wanted it to. So really happy with these. Um, and, and they look really good uh, as well, I think, on the tank. So, totally recommend it. As far as cooling, um, you know, I try to keep the house, you know, air conditioners on when I can to keep the tanks cool. Uh, but I've, you know, also installed a fan up here, just you know, clipped onto the top and helping to blow some air across the top of the tank to keep things cool. And you know, for measuring the temperature, you know, I have nothing fancy. I just have a little floating thermometer here, and you know. Focus at about 77, 78 degrees Fahrenheit. And I did just uh, put this digital thing. This is you know one of the items I got out of last month's my aquarium box. So this is really, really cool. I do like this. It just you know velcros to the side of the tank and measures the uh, somehow measures the water inside of the tank and it agrees with what the other uh, glass thermometer is saying. So happy with that. So I guess uh, that about concludes it for this video. Um, you know, any questions on the equipment I have here, uh, you know, leave them below. And I'll catch you guys next time. Thanks for watching.